Excellent. Hey everyone and welcome to my monthly builds video for April 2016. Uh, first off, I am a little under the weather. I have been this week. I don't like to like, you know, complain about that too much, but just so you know, I am a little bit congested. Also, I know this is the April 2016 builds video, but it's actually still March as of the recording of this. It's March 31st. Tomorrow is April, April 1st. And just so you guys know right up front, I'm not planning on any April Fool's nonsense this year, so this will be my April video, I guess. Anyway, uh, what this video is all about is that choosing parts for a new PC can be confusing for people, especially if you're a first time builder. So each month I create a couple computer build parts lists. So these are parts lists. They're based on your votes and your feedback. Um, although I also do build them sometimes. So if you came to this video expecting to see me actually assemble something, I'm not going to be doing that today, but I will direct you over to my builds playlist, which is right here where I have lots of builds. Um, even just earlier this month, I built my wife at least the first stage of her new computer. So that's up and ready to go if you guys want to check it out. Also, this uh, is based on your feedback, as I already mentioned. So uh, I do want to hear more from you guys. From last month, uh, I actually did this Q&A, or not Q&A, this is a straw poll, just to ask you guys what I should build for this month. So you can see number one right here, full gaming system, $1,000. So I will be doing that full build, including system monitor and peripherals. I'm skipping the VR build for this month simply because a Vive or an Oculus are hard to get right now. If you didn't pre-order it, they're not available till like July. So I'm gonna push that back maybe another month. And then I am gonna also be doing this potential PC build. So I was shooting for about 400 bucks, although I did not actually end up spending $400 with the idea being a system that is really, really upgradable, but has a really low entry level cost. So if you need to get a system, you can kind of build it now and then save up and then upgrade in the future, which I actually often recommend. So there you go. Uh, also, don't forget that next month I uh, will be doing this again. So be sure to vote on what you want to see in May. Let me paste this into Twitch chat. Twitch chat is here too, by the way, guys. I originally broadcast this live every month, twitch.tv slash Paul's Hardware. Um, I don't really have a set schedule for it, but it's just typically at the end of each month or the beginning of the next month. So just uh, follow my Twitter if you want to find that out. Anyway, here's the options for next month. So check those out and let me know what you think. All right, so let's kick right off into it with April 2016. And this is the $1,000 full gaming setup that includes the system itself. And usually the builds that I do here only include the system unless otherwise uh, mentioned. And in this case, I'm mentioning otherwise. This will include the other stuff. Uh, and then also I'm using PC Part Picker to put all my build lists together because I just think it's a great resource for price comparisons. Um, and also it has like filters you can use to make sure everything's compatible and that kind of stuff, compatibility filters. Uh, and then of course, links to all this stuff, if you're watching on YouTube at least, is going to be down in the description. So go ahead and click on all that good stuff and you will be able to actually go to these pages. All right. Build number one again, $1,000 full gaming setup. Here are all the parts for it. Uh, I went with Skylake because I just feel like it's, you know, the best thing to invest in right now. It's the newest platform. Uh, and then here are all the parts on the list. I also included Windows 10 here. I'm going with the kingwin.net version of Windows 10, which originally was about $20, but now the price has gone up to $25 or $28. Also got a monitor and a, uh, a keyboard mouse combo from Cooler Master down there. So let's start with the CPU, i5-6500, um, 3.2 gigahertz. There's a 6400 you can get for a little bit cheaper, but this one you can get for about $195 um, if you buy it straight up from Newegg or something like that. Uh, Skylake, quad core, this one has a higher clock speed than uh, the 6400. I tried to do some overclocking with these um, last, or uh, actually almost two months ago now. Intel has kind of shut that down, but um, it's still a good processor. It's still pretty peppy. So if you want to spend about 50 to $60 more, definitely seriously consider a 6600K. You'd have to spend about 50 bucks more for that CPU and about $30 minimum for a decent cooler to go with it, but that would be a pretty nice boost in CPU performance for this, but it would cost more money. For the motherboard, I have this Gigabyte Z170HD3, which as you can see is available here for as little as $110 with a $10 mail-in rebate from Micro Center. And uh, this little motherboard, I feel like does it, I mean, it gets a job done. It's one of those thinner motherboards, so, you know, bear that in mind. It's not like it's a cheaper motherboard. We're looking at the low $100 price point, but it is still Z170, so you can still overclock. It's even got some cooling on the VRMs, so you can, uh, you know, overclock. It's probably not going to overclock as well as like a $200 board, but you can still get probably 80 to 90% of what you would get with a more expensive board. You got stuff like a couple USB 3.0 uh, front panel headers, 
uh, and and you know you got some legacy support on there as well. That's typically what you get with these lower end motherboards. But um, I also like that you have an M.2 slot because that is a way you can get really fast storage if you want to drop in something like an M.2 SSD in the future. Also, Tom's hardware recommended. Anyway, uh, let's go on to memory. I have a 2 by 8 gig kit from G-Skill. This is the Aegis, e Aegis, G-Skill Aegis, 16 gig, uh, DDR4, 2133. Uh, as you can see, fairly simple design, very low profile, black, it'll blend in, you know. I, I, I really just use the PC part picker drill down to find an 8 gig, 2 by 8 gig kit. 2133 or 2400. I don't want to spend too much because the memory speed isn't going to affect anything, and I wanted it to look decent. $57 for this kit ain't half bad. A Data Premier SP550, 240 gig SSD. I keep coming back to this drive because it's a very decent performer. It's not by any means the fastest uh, 2.5 inch SSD you can get. But it keeps being like 60 bucks or less. There's a few other in this, others in this range that you can get right around $60 for a 240 or 256 gig SSD. I think it's a really nice price to performance. I was even looking at 120 gig SSDs for the second build that I did today. And I don't even feel like those are, like you gotta spend like 40 bucks. I'm like, why wouldn't you just spend 20 bucks more and get basically double the, uh, the capacity? Anyway, uh, for a video card, we have an R9 398 gig. I was trying to wedge a 390X in here, but that really didn't work out. Chose this one from Gigabyte because it's available for about 300 bucks. Seriously consider a 390X if you can find one that's on a special. I wasn't able to find any today, but this one's pretty decent. It's got like, you know, nice cooler from Gigabyte. It's not terribly long. It's even got a backplate on it. Look, look, pretty, pretty nice looking backplate. So it'll look sexy in there. Uh, next up is the case. I want to define S with window. So it's just a really solid case. I've used, well, I actually, I actually haven't built in this specific one, but I built in the Define R5, and uh, Kyle has a build in this. It's just a very nice case for 70 bucks, and I feel like especially for a beginner, you're gonna get a better experience with this because there's plenty of room to work with, and it has room for all of your needs in there, and a nice big window so you can kind of see what's inside. Uh, for the power supply, this is, this is, all right, so the SSD and the power supply from this build are both, uh, I used in both builds because I keep drilling, I keep using my drill down methods on PC part picker to find the right power supply, and I keep coming back to this one because I'm like, all right, I want something between 500 and 650, 700 watts because that'll, that'll accommodate pretty much any, uh, any SSD, I'm sorry, any graphics card, any single graphics card that solution that's out there. Uh, I want it from a reputable vendor. I want 80 plus gold because it's a decent boost in uh, efficiency going to 80 plus gold compared to bronze. And then when you do that and you look at the options, there are several options down here in like the 70-ish dollar range. Actually, you can get this for 50 bucks if you do a mail-in rebate with NCIX right now. Uh, but none of them have this sort of like, look, it's fully modular and it's got all black cables. I'm like, all right, that's like everything I would really want in a power supply. And there's, I mean, there's really not a lot of competition for this one, I feel like, down in this area. So I've used this power supply before. I will keep recommending it as long as it's reasonably priced and has all these features and all that good stuff. Beyond the power supply, you will, of course, need those other things I mentioned. So that includes, I decided to include Windows, and I have been recommending getting Windows 10 from kingwin.net uh, because it is very inexpensive. And whereas there is some questionability to them being possibly gray market or international versions or whatever. I personally think that if you buy this and activate it with Microsoft and it works, then Microsoft is happy, especially with Windows 10. Anyway, the price has gone up since I first started recommending this. It went up by about 10 bucks, but you can still get it for 28.59. And uh, I find that that is a much more reasonable price to invest for something like Windows 10 that is gonna be doing data tracking on you and that kind of thing anyway. So yeah, it's super cheap. Um, also, you need a monitor. So I did the drill down again. This is an Acer. 60 hertz 21.5 inch 1080 monitor with led backlights and um the reason is oh wait that's the wrong thing uh it's just cheap amazon has it for like 90 bucks right now yes you know a higher refresh rate you know 100, 100 hertz or higher than that would be nice but hey can't get that for 90 bucks and uh, this one has very decent ratings and this will get you up and running without having to invest too much uh you also need a keyboard and mouse so for that i have the devastator 2 uh, this is brand new from Cooler Master. They have a Devastator original. The Devastator 2 is new, and therefore I assume much be must be much better. Also, Kitty, hello, welcome, welcome, thanks for joining. Um, 
Have to assume the Devastator 2 much, must be much nicer because it has two on the end. It's available with the red, green, or blue LED backlighting. It's a rubber dome keyboard, but for 30 bucks for a pretty nice, well-built keyboard and mouse combo, forward and back, back buttons on the, on the mouse, which are nice. You have some media controls on the keyboard as well that are up there, and you know, this is just a nice little combo. Devastator Original had uh, tons of positive feedback. This one is already getting uh, really good reviews on Newegg, even though it's brand new. So there you go. All right, so that's my $1,000 complete build. So if you're starting off from ground zero and you have nothing to use from a former system or anything like that, for about 1,000, and I guess I should, I should at least say it's not, I, I did go slightly over. It's 1,011.46, <laughs> according to that. But anyway, let's move on to the next thing which is my potential PC. So I like doing builds where I like, I, I, where somebody says, hey, I'm on a really strict budget. And I'm like, all right, you could build a system on a really strict budget and you know cut way back on everything and get yourself a working system, but you'd have to make compromises in a lot of areas. Or you could do something like this. Get yourself a working system. This doesn't have a graphics card, for example, but this is completely built around the idea that in three or six months, you're gonna be upgrading it and making it better because that's the benefit of building your own system. So I even got this below 400 bucks. This is $360 for your potential PC. So that would even leave you um, some wiggle room to buy yourself an operating system as well. Anyway, this is also a Skylake based build because I didn't feel like there was a nice upgrade path. Well, X99 would be a nice upgrade path, but you can't do that for 400 bucks. AMD, I just, if you're looking at AMD, just wait, wait for later this year because um, the upgrade path there is non-existent. They're completely replacing their platforms on FM2 as well as AM3. Anyway, uh, G4400, ASRock motherboard, uh, eight gigs of RAM, and that same SSD, that same power supply and a Cooler Master case. So let's run through these really quick. Pentium G4400 is basically the cheapest LGA 1151 uh, CPU that you can get just to get a system up and running. However, even for about $60, you get a 3.3 gigahertz dual core processor. Um, it's not going to run circles around the higher end ones, but it will again get you up and running. And it's got integrated graphics, Intel HD Graphics 510. So you'll be able to work your computer. You just won't be able to do a whole lot of gaming right out of the gate. For the motherboard, we have the ASRock Z170M Pro 4S Micro ATX. I chose this one as a part that I'm planning to keep in this build. So there's six parts in this build, four of them I'm intending you to keep, two of them plus sort of a third I'm intending you to replace or upgrade. This one I wanted you to keep. Even though it's about $100, it still has a pretty nice feature set for a $100 motherboard. It's Z170 of course, so if you upgraded to an overclockable CPU in the future, you could overclock it. It's got some VRM cooling on there, which is nice if you're planning to overclock. It is micro ATX, so you don't have quite as much expansion, but I find, you know, most people go for single card solutions anyway, so you can drop, drop a graphics card or even two in here if you so desire in the future. I also like that it has an uh, M.2 port right there in the center, which I don't know how well you can spot that, but there it is. Yeah, M.2, which is right there. You, you really can't see that very well. Come on. There's the M.2, Ultra M.2 right there, so you can upgrade to a faster SSD or something like that in the future if you want to. And then, uh, what, what else What else does this have? It says other things. I need to zoom out. Zoom out. Uh, SATA connectors, USB. The main thing this is missing, I think, is uh, it only has like three fan headers, so you would want to get a fan controller or a fan splitter if you went that route. Uh, and then also for the I.O., you've got a DVI and an HDMI which are gonna be fine for your integrated, uh, integrated CPU graphics for the time being, and I think with those two connectors, you'd be set with just about anything. Budget memory, holy crap. Four gig uh, memory stick for $13. This is a Vexier's budget series. This is just cutting the price down as, as little as you can. I did two of these sticks for $26. Again, there's no, it's, it's ugly, it's just green but it will get you off the ground and up and running and you could upgrade memory very easily in the future. Oh, there's another thing I liked about this motherboard was um, it's got four, four DIMM slots, um, so you can add more memory in the future if you want. Um, again, that same SSD, I just, I find that an SSD is a, a, a vital thing to have right now if you want a fast feeling computer that's very responsive. And I also like the idea of keeping your SSD and not planning to upgrade it because if you install Windows on it or something like that, the SSD and the motherboard, that's gonna give you the easiest upgrade in the future. If you have to swap out the SSD and reinstall Windows or something like that, it's just a little bit more of an inconvenience. And if you change the motherboard out, 
often your Windows license won't work anymore if you have done a Windows license. So keep that in mind too. All right. The case here is the Cooler Master N200. This is one I've recommended before. It's a nice case. It's got plenty of airflow. It's all black, um, well designed. You don't have like a you know, real big side panel window or anything like that. But hey, you got front panel USB 3.0, for example, and uh, just plenty of room in there. And you can see this case has many reviews over a long period of time, and people like it. Finally, that same power supply as before. UVGA Supernova Next 650 watt, 80 plus gold. Because again, all of those reasons I told you guys before are the same reasons that I would choose that now. And I can't, like, I, I tried to find something else, was like, yeah, nope. 70 bucks, get yourself a power supply. It'll last you for years, and it will do everything you want it to do. Anyway, though, that is all for this video, guys. I really hope you've enjoyed it. Those are my two builds. Let me know what you think of them down in the comments section down below on YouTube. Also, hit the thumbs up button and leave me a like if you enjoyed the video. Uh, you can also check out my store at store.polishlibrary.net, where you can pick up mugs and pint glasses and t-shirts, not this t-shirt, but I have a brand new t-shirt design coming out very soon. Stay tuned for more tech videos, and we'll see you all next time. Water is delicious.